Ah yes, a romantic hot air balloon ride over the desert valleys of Cappadocia. People just like us come from all over the world to enjoy this once in a lifetime experience. But you are at the whims of the weather gods. If the wind picks up, no hot air balloons. And in busy season, it could take days to find you another spot on a balloon. And then you have to hope all over again. That's what happened to us. So, was the trip worthwhile without being able to tick off this bucket list item? Stick with us to find out as we explore all the other things you can do in Cappadocia. The main town of Gorem features a number of cave hotels built into the natural rocky structures all over the region. We stayed in hostel style accommodation and chose a small cave-like nook in the corner of the room to set up our base camp. Welcome to our new home. <laughs> now this sounded like a great idea until I realised that there was no airflow and no air conditioning in the rooms and it was hot. I think it was only the wines I had with dinner that allowed me to fall asleep while in this mini oven. Outside of the room, there were a number of levels that you had full access to, including a swimming pool area and a big platform that overlooked the whole town. This would be the perfect place to watch those beautiful hot air balloons float by as the sunrise lights up this unique landscape. We had grand plans to do just that on our second morning after we enjoyed our balloon ride tomorrow. And despite being up at 4am, it wasn't to be. At least the sunrise was nice. So we're here on what looks like an absolutely glorious day in Cappadocia. But unfortunately for us, way up high, even though there's not a cloud in the sky, is a little bit too much wind for the hot air balloons. Now, this happens from time to time. Not much we can do about it, but to make things worse, they're saying that tomorrow is also cancelled and some people are saying it'll be out of action for the rest of the week. Outside of that, we can go and see a few things today. We can go to Love Valley and you know, the, uh, I forget what it's called now, the fairy thing. <laughs> anyway, we'll do our best. If at this point you're starting to feel sorry for us, you can cheer us up by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. That fairy thing was actually the fairy chimneys and that was our first stop for the day. The chimneys themselves are the result of volcanic activity and erosion over thousands of years. But what makes this network of mushroom shaped structures so interesting are the handmade caves that have turned these mushrooms into a small village and you can walk in and out of what appeared to be old houses, storerooms or general gathering areas and at times it felt like I was sitting in the Flintstones lounge room. It's a fun place to explore and a real window into a different time. We then jumped in the car for a quick 10 minute drive to one of the more romantic destinations. Or it's supposed to be anyway. Love Valley. I don't know why they didn't just call it the Valley of Dicks. I actually thought they called it the Valley of Dicks. Yeah. Yep, so we got long and thin. We have short and fat. Which one's yours? Mine. Where's the biggest? <laughs> <laughs> now there are two ways you can enjoy Love Valley. The first is quick and easy. There's a car park right next to the viewing area where there's a number of great vantage points that offer views all the way across the valley. The second is long and difficult, but of course, much more rewarding and immersive. And that is hiking all the way through the valley. It's about a three or four hour hike. And if you're going to attempt this, I encourage you to start early because that desert sun gets really, really hot. If you're willing to venture a little further away, you could also explore the underground cities of Kaimakli and Derinkuyu. These were originally built to protect locals from foreign invasion and you could hide up to 3,500 people at Kaimakli and 20,000 people at Derinkuyu, which is simply extraordinary. When you consider they also had to take livestock in there, I cringe at what the living conditions would have been like at the time, but it's a fascinating place to explore. You can visit all of these sites in a single day on an organised tour. There's also some specialty tours that'll take you around on an ATV or even horse riding through some of these destinations. I've included links in the description so you can check these out for yourself. Now the question remains whether you would do any of this if it were not for the attraction of the hot air balloon ride. And my honest answer is no. I think they're all incredible experiences and they really complement the hot air balloon ride experience 
but it's a long way to get to the Cappadocia region and I wouldn't necessarily go there just for these other activities. So my best advice is to start your turkey experience in Cappadocia so you've got a buffer in terms of rescheduled balloon rides and you can afford to stay in town until you get your opportunity and without ruining your itinerary. We did things the other way around and Cappadocia was our last stop so we didn't have the flexibility to be able to rebook and unfortunately we missed out. But that also means we have an excuse to come back one day and do it all again.